Welcome back to What She Said. You know, visiting Christmas markets is lots of fun. And let's be honest, one of our favorite parts of going to these markets is enjoying the assortment of festive cocktails and beverages. For me, it's all about the dark rum. Everything from a warm and inviting hot toddy after a long hike with the dogs to my homemade eggnog. So I'm very happy to have Juan Coronado, Bacardi brand ambassador in studio, who's going to share tips and tricks for elevated cocktails for holiday entertaining, including a coquito which is a Puerto Rican spin on the traditional eggnog. Welcome to what she said, Juan. Well, hello, hello. Thank you, Kate, for having me. Good well, afternoon, Canada. Well, tell us about a coquito. What, what What is it? Oh, the coquito is just that super epic Latino <laughs> cocktail that you can now buy, go by December and, you know, try to make it or visit some friends or visit some relatives and they will always have a bottle of coquito ready. It's mandatory in every household to have a coquito. Okay, but so a coquito isn't isn't an actual cocktail? Yes, it is. It, it is. is. It's sort of like a punch. So basically, it's an eggnog without eggs. So the recipe goes like this. Uh, you get two cups of Bacardi Superior Carta Blanca, um, equal parts of um, condensed milk and um, evaporated milk, and then double that with coconut milk. In addition to that, you add a teaspoon of a vanilla extract, and you garnish it with some... Um, grounded cinnamon on top. It's quite amazing. And you serve it in, you can serve it in a in a pineapple, I saw. Well, uh, there is many ways of serving it, but like, you know, the tradition goes like this in Puerto Rico. You will go um, from house to house singing Christmas carol songs mm-hmm. and celebrating. So you don't want to have a whole pineapple on the first stop. <laughs> you just want to go like small because by the end of the, you know, finish the, finish the last house, it's you don't gonna know be the plenty words in anymore. Your belly. Yeah, it's going to be there. So, I mean, that, that's great. Now, being a brand ambassador sounds like a dream job. And, it, I, and I watched your YouTube video. You seem so truly passionate about it, but you have some fairly strict standards. Oh, yes, I do. You know, like... Um, I have the greatest job in the world, no (laughs) doubt. It's true. I travel all around the world and I teach people what I love, you know, the passion of my industry. But um, I'm representing a family. So there's a lot of weight and responsibility there. Mm -hmm. The Bacardi family, you know, has a long tradition and a great history. And I'm the, you know, the guardian of that, of those, you know, moments. And of course, I want to represent them very well. Is, Is it still a family yeah, it's still Bacardi is the largest rum produced that is a family-owned brand. Wow. Now, I'm a dark rum yeah. girl, but I've never really understood um, what makes the difference between light and dark rum. Kate, that's a great question. The Bacardi family has been making rum since 1862. It's 155 years of knowing how to make rum. And uh, nowadays, you know, there's ways of like cutting corners when it comes to rum productions, but they have their name and their reputation and their you know, history on this, so they don't do the cut in the corners, as we say in the industry. The difference between a light body rum and a dark rum happens in the process. Aging is basically when we allow Mother Nature to do what it does best, mm-hmm. which is like concentrate the spirits. So we Asian American white oak, use bourbon barrels, we toast them, and of course some of that colors transfers into ah. the rum to maturating the spirit. So even it's on those vanillas and woody notes. Yeah, I, I love that. And I'm not, I'm this, what's the one you have one in here? This is Bacardi Gold. Yes, this is Bacardi Carta Oro or Gold. Oh, nice. This one is aged for um, up to two years on American White Oak on the undisturbed aging statesman of Puerto Rico. So if it's a, if it's a light rum, then like a, a, a clear one, the white Bacardi that we know, so that is not aged? No, no, no. That's been aged as well for a minimum of a year. But um, Don Facundo Bacardi, early on in his um, uh, process that he was um, starting, he discovered that charcoal was a natural way to filter rum, taking some of the unwanted flavors, colors, and aromas that could be present in it. But is, by law, is aged minimum for one year. You are going to share a couple of tips and tricks for elevating a standard cocktail into holiday entertaining cocktail. Absolutely. Um, When it comes to cocktails, you know, Bacardi is definitely the king of the bar because Bacardi is the most mixable spirit that exists out there. 
you can go from a light expression, mixable like Bacardi Superior, to something more complex with subtle notes like Bacardi Carta Gold. And then we go to Bacardi 8 and Black and so many other ones. And then we have flavors as well. So how versatile can we be? So having Bacardi at your event will basically create an interactive bar between you and your guest. Mm -hmm. So how do you elevate a cocktail? I'm a Puritan. I love a daiquiri. Daikiri, that's the real name Daikiri, of it. Daikiri is really? Yeah. Oh, it's just it's a daiquiri. It's, <laughs> it's actually the name of a town in Cuba. Daikiri. Where the cocktail was invented wow. in the town of Daikiri. Okay. So that cocktail is basically the simple and easiest cocktail to, a, to make. It has um, lime juice, mm -hmm. sugar, and Bacardi mm -hmm. Carta Blanca Superior. Mm -hmm. But you can take that cocktail into a winter expression. Instead of like having sugar, you can substitute that with a honey syrup. Mm -hmm. Or a maple syrup. A maple syrup. Hello, so I was go, we're here. Yeah, hello. Right? <laughs> so using that and adding a, perhaps like a teaspoon or a bar spoon of spices of dram mm -hmm. and shaking it vigorously together, you're going to have the most amazing winter daiquiri. And, you know, that's for me that I love my daiquiris. But the, the space, you know, that you can make cocktails. Is some, there's so many things that you can do. What about um, a lot of people now are doing self-serve bars where, for when guests are just, you know, getting into the groove of things, like mojito stations, that kind of thing. Is that is that a, a trend? It is, it is. You know, I don't know why it took us so long to realize <laughs> that when we're hosting a party, we need to cook, we need to clean, we need to do this, we need to serve, and we need to make cocktails too. Yep. So how about having a self, like do it yourself bar home that you can just set up mm -hmm. let's say bunch of mint uh candy cane your sugar syrup and uh, your candy party. cane yeah that's the garnish oh yeah cute. Okay. it's christmas you know holidays <laughs> so having that bar you know set it up and just showing one of the guests how to do it mm -hmm. believe me somebody will take on the responsibility of like hosting the rest of the people that is coming like when they see that mojito with like mint and um, um, frosted sugar on top and the mm -hmm. candy cane, what are you drinking? I just made myself a mojito. Mojito. So you have a, what do they call it? A muddler? When yes. You, a muddler for, for mixing things. You could set it up. I guess I might be a little worried about, you know, responsible hosting and serving quantities. I never know like how much to buy for my guests. Do you have any suggestions on that? Yeah. Um, usually there's, uh, there's several formulas of, um, you know, how much product to get, counting the heads, you know, the, mm -hmm. the, you know, the amount of guests that you're going to have, the length of your event, et cetera. But it's very simple. Like, you know, let's say you're going to host 10 people at your house and you're going to welcome them with a welcome cocktail. Then you guys are going to go into some more serious and heavier foods after you eat others. Mm -hmm. So changing that cocktail number two, we go to a cocktail that has more character, like a toddy, like an old fashioned. But this is like a good interview. You have to start strong and finish strong. <laughs> you definitely need to have that coquito at the end of the meal. <laughs> Otherwise, ain't having a Christmas Latino party in your house. Uh, you know? Okay. So that's your very favorite Christmas cocktail? You need to end with a coquito. It's mandatory. Like, All right. Yeah. Now, you are going to um, put these recipes up. We're going to have a blog up on our website, and it will be up there in time for you to make things for your Christmas uh, party. Uh, where can people go to learn more about yeah. you and Bacardi? Um, our website is like super interactive. Like right now, we're like trying to teach people about our um, ginger berry punch, which is an easy punch to have when your guests arrive, which is Bacardi Superior, cranberry juice, ginger ale, lime and lemon. And it's very Ooh, simple. Oh, that sounds good. It's delicious because the ginger ale just, you know, fizzes and make it bubble. Yeah, and it's so refreshing. And it's ready. You can garnish that with lemon wheels, cinnamon sticks, and, you know, cranberries in there, mm -hmm. frozen cranberries. Mm -hmm. So it's quite nice. But uh, all of this information is available at our website, www.bacardi.com. And um, I'm Juan Coronado. I'm always around doing Bacardi phone things, so you can Google me. All right. Thank you very much for coming in. And don't forget, the recipes will all be up on our website. Juan Coronado, it's a pleasure. Are you leaving the Bacardi Gold here? Absolutely. Yay! <laughs> this is what she said on 105.9 The Region, and we'll be right back. Well, she said, she's magical, mystical, or a powerful wonder girl.